Welcome to Test 2 Plus, everybody. I'm Trace. This is a show where we take a deep dive into some of the biggest science topics around. We're talking about Mars this week, and today is all about what Mars can do for us. So what could Mars do for us? I mean, again, closest neighbor. So we can get there, maybe. It's potentially habitable, which is awesome. I mean, potentially, let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's a little over half of Earth's size. The axis is similar on Mars as well, which is important. So Earth's axis or angle as it's facing the sun is similar. Mars is 23, I think, and we're 25. The soil there on Mars can grow stuff, assuming we could, of course, get to Mars. But they've done experiments here on Earth where they simulate Martian regolith or Martian soil, and it's able to sustain crops which is great. So if we can get there, we could grow food. There's also mineral mining, which is really important. It creates a commercial reason to go to space. Mineral mining in the Martian crust is going to be different than Earth's crust. You know, here we have to dig down and we can get gold and we can get carbon and any number of other things. But there, because Mars is a completely different planet, it's going to have different minerals. So they're thinking the volcano plains of Mars probably have nickel and copper, or titanium, let's see, iron platinum, palladium, and chromium, which I'm not really sure what any of those things do, but some of them sound really good. There's also impact craters on Mars, which saves on digging, so that's a bonus for any mineral mining that goes on on Mars. But of course, really, the point of going to Mars isn't to mine it or even to grow crops, although those could both be reasons to go, to go once we get there. Colonization is the most exciting thing about Mars humans living off of the planet Earth. I mean, that is amazing. Just think about that. We could have a colony on another planet. If an asteroid were to wipe out Earth, people would survive on Mars. That's, that's, I mean, that's mind-blowing. Of course, they would be Earthers originally, but technically, I guess they would be Martians at that point, right? And you probably would have all sorts of political implications eventually. If somebody colonized Mars, then you'd have like, well, we want to be independent from Earth. <laughs> that could get weird. Taxation without representation, but on a galactic level, I guess. Anyway, the technology to go to Mars is kind of huge. It, it, you can get off Earth and get to the moon. That was all driven by the space race with the Soviets, of course. We're not racing anybody to Mars. So that's part of the reason progress has been so slow so far. But space technologies, they make everything better. Every dollar we put into space research comes back to us multiple times over in a variety of other ways. I mean, cordless tools are a side effect of space technology, because we need to be able to use cordless drills to work in space. Solar power is a side effect of space technology. It had been invented well before that, but because of powering satellites, we made solar power better. Video gaming, nuclear power industry, US Olympic sports, NASCAR, they all have technology from the space race making them better now. So imagine if there was another Martian space race. It's farther. It's more difficult. We need to learn to grow crops better. We need to learn to entertain humans better. I don't, you can't exactly get the internet on Mars. We could read. That'd be great. But there's a psychological impact of being alone all the way to Mars and then being with a very few number of people on Mars. And they've done experiments like the Mars 500 project where they put people in a capsule for 500 days and things were really rough. <laughs> they eventually got out and talked about all of the issues that came up with just being in these small spaces. And it's not like you can go get a breath of fresh air because you can't. There's nothing to breathe on Mars. On top of all of this, learning about other worlds in general is amazing. And you know, we can send robots to Mars. We've done it. We've sent more probes to Mars than to any other planet. Uh, but robots only do so much. When Curiosity landed on Mars, it was very exciting for everybody around the world. But if a person landed on Mars, that's more than exciting. That's inspirational. That gets people to want to go, to want to explore more, and to want to be engineers and scientists and mathematicians that makes humans better. So that is how valuable Mars really is. Tomorrow we'll be talking about why Mars makes more sense for exploration than Venus. Subscribe to make sure you see that, and to see my video from yesterday on why we are obsessed with the red planet, click here now.